Hello, hello. How's it going? Boop. Hi. Uh, so I've been getting asked a lot uh, on the stream lately about how I'm using uh, Blender and Unreal together and how I'm bringing content over into the uh, from Blender to Unreal. So I'm just going to cover it really quickly, show you the add-on I'm using and how I've set it up so that it updates pretty quickly. All right, let's check it out. So we've got uh, we've got Unreal here, right? And I've got some folders set up already for like I've got a mesh folder for the scene that we've been working on on the stream. Uh, and you can see I've got um, static mesh or SM underscore and then these these props, right? Which are all these guys. Now if we go to the uh, Blender file and we look at that, it looks like this. Um, and uh, in the collections I've got, like in collection one is props, collection two is wall pieces, and then three is for any tests. Oh, this actually needs to go in props. So I've got all this set up, right? Now, how do I, how am I bringing these over into Unreal? Um, and there's, there's some really nice plugins and the one I'm using currently is uh, it's called Unreal Engine 4. So if you press N, you'll get your right, right side panel to come out, which is usually like items and tools and view. I have some other add-ons in here, but we're just gonna look at the Unreal Engine one for uh, this video. It's pretty straightforward. Anyways, uh, let's let me pull up the GitHub page. I'll make sure that this page is in the link uh, or in the text below the video in the description. But basically, you just uh, you go to your edit here preferences and let's type in Unreal. So I've got I've already installed it. It's just called Blender for Unreal Engine, uh, and I haven't clicked on anything in here to change anything so it's a basically default um, and you'll see if I press N and uh, it'll be here as well uh, let's let's just make a let's just make a prop here or like a cube classic right so we've got a cube here what's really nice about this add-on is it's looking at the pivot point so if we do control period uh, and just move that down so that it's at the base of the object control period again to get out of that. Now we have the pivot at the base. If I, um, let's see if I, if I press Alt G, it'll reset the transforms, which are this information. Um, so we've got this, this object. I'm gonna go in and we'll just locate it. It's just called cube. Make sure your naming conventions are nice for whatever you're whatever you're setting up. But for this example, we're just gonna select the cube. Uh, the export type, we set to uh, recursive. Uh, I'm honestly, maybe you'll answer it, someone will answer the questions, but uh, I was having issues with it importing into Unreal unless it was set to recursive. If you have, say, another object and um, you shift, uh, drag it on top of the other one, it's now parented to it. The parented objects don't need to have an export type. Uh, they can be set to auto. So the, the parent itself needs to be recursive. So if I take this, uh, this, these will both export. So let's kill that. We'll just look at this guy. And, um, one other thing to keep in mind is that you need to switch your static mesh, um, as an export file path, to the actual location of your folder. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to make the video. So if you go into, into Unreal, you see we have a mesh folder here. I'm just gonna right click on it and you have a show and explore, which will give you the path. You can then copy that path and then in Blender, you just paste that path here. Uh, and then uh, if you need static mesh or SM underscore to be something else for when you make static meshes, you can actually change it here. So that's pretty nice. So with that said, paths there, um, we'll just call it, we'll call it cube test. That way I see it in, uh, in uh, Unreal. If you scroll all the way down, you get a uh, export to Unreal Engine 4 button. So if, uh, what I do is I right click and add it to my quick favorite. So if I press Q, it's right there, right? So I can press Q 
export to Unreal Engine. And then if I go to Unreal, you'll get the prompt for like what, what you're bringing in. Um, you can bring in materials. I don't know to what extent, but I use that as a way to separate out elements uh, for, for material types. So like if you had this base here and then you have an emissive uh, material for this guy, but this is all coming in as one asset, you can put a material on this one and a material on this one and Unreal will recognize the two separate elements uh, and split them in that way while still keeping it as a single uh, object. So we'll just we'll just say import and there it is. It's right here. We just drag it out. Look at that. There's our cube. Right? So that's that's pretty cool. Um, let's let's give it a material really fast here. Material instance, let's do I. So now we got our cool material gradients and whatnot on there. Now the, the really nice thing about how this add-on works is now I'm in here, right? If I go in and um, let's let's grab this side here and bevel that. If I just click on it, press Q, export, go back here, it should just re-import it. There we go. And you'll see your changes immediately, which is super nice. If I, uh, I mean, you can be in object mode and duplicate, right? And then export, that'll update that way. You can also do the parenting like I was talking about where uh, if I dupe this uh, over here and uh, shift drag it onto this object, now they're parented. This still will move around, but this is the parent and we've got it set to uh, recursive Export recursive, so that's good. Press N so the panel's gone. And then I just press Q again and export. It might give me another prompt, let's see. Nope, it did not, cool. And you'll see too that uh, if we look at the object, that it is just one material. I guess I could give you the example of like if you, if we take this one and we give it um, a new material, let's call it mat two. So this one doesn't have a material and this one has mat too. If I select this and export now, let's see what happens. Reset to FBX. And uh, now you have two materials. And if we highlight them, you can see which ones are which. So yeah, that's the, that's the add-on that I'm using to get uh, from Blender to Unreal. It's super easy. And there's a whole lot more in this uh, that I'm not using. Like it looks like you can you can set up LODs and like manual LODs and some other properties. Naming conventions. Looks like you can export out all types of stuff. So give it a try. And uh, look at that. You can even generate light map UVs in here. That's crazy. I didn't know that was even there. Anyways, yep, that's how I do it. Um, hopefully that's, uh, helpful for you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.